Hi, I'm Jeff Ludy, the owner of Houston Window Experts. Thank you again for watching this video. I'm so glad you're here. I have my trusty assistant, Bradley Swenson. If you happen to come into our showroom here where we have 19 beautiful brands of windows and doors, you get a chance to meet me, get a chance to meet Bradley. I need some help today because there's some activities involved with this video that uh, a good strong hombre would be nice to have <laughs> in the video. So, you know, we get this question all the time. People are like, okay, what should I expect when it comes to the glass on my new windows? Because let's think about this, right? When you buy a new window, pretty much 95% of that window is glass. The other 5% is the frame material, like is it aluminum or vinyl or fiberglass or wood, aluminum, capping? What is, what is the window? Well, the window is primarily glass. And if you've watched my videos about the uh, low E coatings, which is a great video to watch if you want to understand more about glass, you'll learn that while we do have about 1,800 plus or minus window companies in the U.S. that make windows, we only have like four big glass suppliers that supply glass to all these companies. And the biggest supplier out there that most of your top tier companies like the Andersons and the Pellas and the Amscos and the Windsors will use, is gonna be a company called Cardinal Glass. So Cardinal makes the glass, the window companies put the glass inside of their window frame and it ships to us and we install it, et cetera. So people ask the question, Jeff, what is an acceptable piece of glass? Because just like anything else, right? Like glass from your, from your, uh, from your glasses or uh, a glass that you drink out of, glass is never completely perfect. So in, in order for this industry to have some form of standard, right? That everyone agrees to, this is considered passable, this is not passable or qualified, not qualified, they decided that each individual company should not make up their own set of rules, right? That there should be some governing body that says this is acceptable and this is not. And so here comes, in essence, the rules about glass inspection for homeowners. This is, this is a document that you can get, and we'll put it on our, the link down below that you can go to our website and you can see this document, that this is the standard that was established by AMA. AMA is A-A-M-A. -A -A. AMA stands for the American Architectural Manufacturers Association. And so everyone subscribes to the same standard. Everyone's glass is tested to the same standard so that you can't say, well, I paid a lot of money for this window and it has glass like it was a cheap window. No, the cheap window, the expensive window, all the windows in between, they all subscribe to the same standards. Kind of like cars have to have meet, meet certain minimum safety standards. Same way with glass, it has to pass this standard. So today in this video, with Bradley's help, I want to go through these with you and you can follow along if you go to our website. But because people ask, what is this? Is this good? Is this bad? Should I reject this window? Should I accept this window? And I want you to see that it's, it's a, neutral, uh, a neutral decision based on facts. So the first thing we want to do is look at the home inspection directions. And it says that the first thing you should do is thoroughly clean the window. I mean, obviously you wanna make sure that the window's clean before you start. And then it says stand 10 feet away directly in front of the glass, 90 degrees to the surface. So, I need my helper. Here's a window that I found a problem with that fails. I'm gonna show you why it fails, okay? So you've got it there. I'm gonna come out 10 feet, which is right here. I'm gonna just put that little ruler right there for a minute. Okay, thank you. So what that means is, if you were in your home, checking out a new window that was installed or a new door or something, you would stand 10 feet away with that, with that surface directly in front of you, not at an angle directly in front of you. That's the standard. And by the way, before you shoot me or shoot anybody, these aren't, these aren't my rules. I didn't invent this. It's just, this is what's considered acceptable in our industry. So you stand 10 feet away, you look at that window flat, and then we're gonna have a few criteria we're gonna read through. Now, let me tell you what, what is not fair. I had a lady one time that had a, a big giant window that we put in for her, and she was complaining about this, this window, can't, the glass in this window is not going to pass. There's no way this passes inspection. This is terrible. So I went out to her house, and it was something like this, okay? And, and she, when I showed her this, she understands, but, but at first she was confused. She said, Jeff, there's an imperfection up over here in this top left-hand corner. I said, okay, point it out to me. She said, well, it's kind of like, oh, oh, 
if you just, oh, where is that? Um, somewhere up here. And she did all of this. And then she said, I said, how did you find this out? She said, well, the other day I was laying on the floor and she got down on the floor. I'm not going to get down on the floor, but I'll kind of give you a little bit of a hint, right? She said, I was on the floor playing with my puppy and the light was just at the right spot. I think it was about 9.35 in the morning. And I saw it. I saw it. And, and I know it's here. I know it's here. I just can't spot it. And then, and then she did spot it. <laughs> She's like, yes, 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 yes. Right here, right here. Come look. And I tell you, it took me, took me five minutes to find it. When I did, I realized, okay, there, yes, there's something there on that glass, but certainly not the rule for how you determine whether or not it's an imperfection. From 10 feet away, perpendicular at a 90 degrees, there's no way you could have spotted that. So sometimes, you know, I had a guy ask me one time, he said, it might be in too picky. And I had to say, yeah, you're, you're being too picky. I mean, I, I'm, I never want to tell a homeowner they're wrong, but there are standards for this. And yes, you can be too picky. So if there's a point blemish, let me tell you what a point blemish is. A point blemish is say like dirt, debris, residue, a pinhole, a spot, a fingerprint, etc. If you can see it at 10 feet, then you go up and measure it. If you measure it, it can't be more than a 16th of an inch. That's the standard. And it has to have a minimum of 24 inches between blemishes. So let's grab this piece right here and put that up here for me, if you would. So to help make it visible, and, and Clay will have to come back and get the perfect lighting for you to see this. But if you notice here, I put some blue tape next to two blemishes on this window. Uh, there's a little blemish right there. I'm going to point to it from the back. And it is probably about a sixteenth of an inch. And then there's another little blemish right down there. And it's probably, it's more like almost like a scratch than it is a blemish, but there are two issues with this window. And so the question is, is it, does it meet the sixteenth inch size? And is it more than 24 inches apart. In this case, yes, it's 29 inches apart between those two. 29 inches and under a 16th of an inch, this would pass. Good example. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, can you see those spots? You're here in person. Not well, no. I'm close. I know that they're there if okay. I saw it. All right, so now that you know that they're there, here's a real test. Go, go to the other end of the table. That's only, this is an eight foot table. Go to the end of the table. Nope, do not uh, see them. Can you see that at all? Not, not at all. Okay, so, so the first test is, can you see it at 10 feet? Nope. If you can't see it at 10 feet, we don't even need to measure it. But let's suppose you could see it at 10 feet. This is, this is probably right at a 16th of an inch or maybe a little bit under, do you agree? Yeah. But, but they're more than 24 inches apart. Yeah. Okay, all right, you can put this one away. So that's, that's the uh, blemish. Then is what's called linear blemishes, right? And like scratches, rubs, marks. They can't be more than three inches long, and they must be at least 24 inches apart. So let's, I actually think this one has a good example of that. Come over here and look at this. Now that is, well actually that's internal on that. This is internal on this. Okay, no, this is not the one. Let's look at the other one. Let's see if we got something on there. I thought I had something with a, with like a scratch on it. You see how much work it is to even find these things? Okay, right here. Right there is a scratch right there. I'm gonna put this behind it. Do you see that, Bradley? It's like a oh, horizontal yeah, 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 little yeah, scratch. Yeah. I do see it now. Okay, and I'm gonna grab my, my ruler here. Took a while to find it, but. Dude, that has got to be like a, maybe a quarter inch, maybe, a, maybe three eighths of an inch. Okay, so it can be three inches long. I know it sounds like, oh my God, really? Yes. Really, it can be three inches long. As long as there's not more than two of those within 24 inches, it still passes. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is Boeing. Now, I don't have a window to show you the Boeing, but I've seen them before where the, the glass looks like it's almost wow. bowed out or it's even sunken in a little bit. And they call it deviation in flatness spanning the entire pane of glass. It's commonly seen in tempered glass. Um, and it, it's not something you can really measure, but you can, you can pretty much see it with your eye, kind of just gotcha. blowing across. That's considered acceptable. The next one is distortion. 
It's a localized deviation in flatness that can look like ripples across the glass or looks like almost like pockets. So imagine if you stood at the side of the glass, Bradley, and you saw these little ripples sort of going down the side. That's what it is. It's allowed and it's very common in tempered glass. You have to remember tempered glass, and we have a great video about tempered glass. You should see that one. That's pretty. Remember the tempered glass video? Yeah, that's yeah. a cool one. Uh, tempered glass is going to go into an oven, and it's going to bake so that they can create additional tension in the glass so that when it breaks, it's like safety glass. It doesn't harm anyone. So you're going you're gonna to have these ripples in it. And, and I usually, I don't think I've seen more than one or two in my whole career of looking at this stuff, but it can happen, and that's why they're answering the question. That's considered acceptable. This is what's called a strain pattern. It's an optical effect that results from tempering. It appears like dark spots. Um, if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, have you ever done this with your car? Like you're wearing a pair of sunglasses and you go up and you see on your car window what looks like these little splotches, like little black splotches, almost like a polka dot look. Do you remember that? I've never, I, mean, I haven't seen that, yeah. If you've got polarized glasses, you go up to your car, especially like I don't have you seen on the rear windshield where they, they tint it, it's more obvious. And you can go like this and put them up and down, and you'll see like these, these kind of black spots come in and out. That's actually due uh, to the tempering. And, and that's considered acceptable as well. Um, there's what they call fringes. It's an optical effect that appears as a faint random pattern resembling an oil stain. I have seen that. It almost looks like there's oil on the surface of the glass. And actually that's um, the result of having exactly matched thickness on two panes of glass. Now listen to this. This is just how crazy this is. So on this particular window, Bradley, the outside pane of glass is 1 8 inch thick. Mm -hmm. The inside pane of glass is also 1 8 inch thick. Now we can get different thicknesses on glass, but with the double strength glass unit, an eighth inch over eighth inch is considered the, the gold standard. When, do you, when the glass is made so exact, it is so perfectly thick on both pieces, you can actually get it's just an optical illusion. It's not even real, but it, it looks and you think, why is there oil on my glass? It's really pretty weird. For that to happen actually means you got a great window. Let me tell you why. It has to be at about one thousandth of an inch in accuracy between those two panes of glass. Wow. We're not talking like, oh, this is a sixteenth or a thirty-second or a sixty-fourth inch bigger. No, I mean, they're so similar, it's under one thousandth of one inch. Crazy. Inconsistency in the glass. So I've seen it before, which is kind of like a unicorn window. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but but it, it can happen. Um, there's there's what they call the Newton rings. Newton rings is like another optical issue. It looks like concentric rings, almost like it looks a little bit like a rainbow sort of uh, pattern on the glass. And there's really no there's no standard for that. Um, there's not a pass or a fail on that. If you see that, let me know. We can talk to the manufacturer about swapping it. It's, it's something that is rarely seen. Uh, there's color uniformity. The question comes up, how come when I'm standing at this window and the other window in my house and I'm looking at them, this one looks a little greener than that one or this one looks a little bluer than that one or it looks a little darker than that one. According to them that it's allowed within reason, there's, there's special instrumentation that can be used to check that and I have one of those, it's a, a spectrometer. We can check it to make sure it was made right, but if you spot that, that should be a flag. You should bring that up and we'll come out and we'll test it to see. Uh, it doesn't happen much, that's very rare. Suction cup marks, so we use these big suction cups. They're about eight inches in diameter and we use them for carrying the glass. So people say, well, I see a suction cup and if there was, or even where there was a label, if there is suction cup marks between the glass, um, it's not allowed. That would be considered a fail, it did not pass and that would be something that would be um, replaced yeah. by the manufacturer. However, if it's on the surface, even after complete cleaning, if it's on the surface and maybe just certain times of the day, maybe if the glass gets wet and then as it dries, you see a little bit of a ring, that's considered something that, that passes. So there's things like that sometimes that people see that kind of, they're like, why do I see these suction cups? And like literally by the time you get over there to look, it's just kind of yeah. disappear, yeah. Uh, and then the last one is uh, sight line infringement. Uh, sight line infringement is where this, this spacer, this around the edge, oh, you know what you could do? Go grab that um, IG that we have over there that we use to, to show people the different types of glass, the triple coat, the double coat, because I want them to see the edge of that spacer. So when you have a double pane window, right? You have an outside piece of glass and an inside piece of glass, 
and there's a spacer in there. It's called a spacer. It goes between the outside and inside pane of glass to connect those two. Um, that actually has a, a material in there that uh, is sometimes made out of butyl, sometimes it's made out of foam, sometimes it's made out of um, stainless steel or aluminum. Yeah, perfect, that's it. And that material is right here on the, on the perimeter, on the border. Um, if you look right there, see right there, that, that material right there I'm talking about? Okay, so normally your frame, right, your frame of your window, because this is gonna go inside the frame, the frame of your window covers that up like that, all right? Now if that, for some reason, if that was not covering it right, and you could see that, and it came in more than one eighth, so one eighth is acceptable, but if it came into the viewing space, the sight line of the glass, by more than one eighth of an inch, then that would also be considered a fail. Um, you can actually have a little chip on the glass. If you notice here on this glass, probably because we handle this thing so much, but you see right there how that actually is cracked? Okay, so that's more of a crack than a chip. If your window came in like this, this would qualify to be replaced, right? But if it had a little tiny chip, like that corner right there, see I just got banged up a little bit? If it's not more than a 1 8 inch chip, then that would actually pass as well. So let me show you like a very for sure will not pass window. <laughs> it's this one right here. And, and uh, you know what, Clay, actually if you stand over here, you can probably see that a little bit better. And we'll get some close-ups for this, but right here, look at that. Can you see that line right there? That does not pass. That's between the glass. And then if you move around this side, Clay, you'll be able to see it better on that one too. That does not pass. I mean, I can see that from 10 feet away. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Bradley? That's yeah, pretty obvious, yeah, isn't that's it? That's very obvious. There's another one right here. Okay, and you can see this is not on the surface. I'm trying to clean it. It's not on the surface of the glass. That is between the panes of glass. This, my friends, is considered unacceptable. Those other ones I showed you, that were, those, those are acceptable, they pass. I just want you to understand this. If you said to me, Jeff, I thought I was getting a good window. I paid a lot of money for this window. Why is it like this? My answer to you can be, you could have paid half that much for that window, you could have paid twice that much for that window. It came from Cardinal Glass. It's probably gonna have the same situation. If I ordered 100 windows from Pella, 100 windows from Anderson, 100 windows from Marvin, 100 windows from, what, the, the, the percentages would probably still be just about the same. They're all gonna have the same issues over a period of time. It is glass, it is glass. Uh, even a diamond, closing thought, even a diamond has ratings, right? Like, I can have a one carat diamond that costs $1,000. I can have a one carat diamond that costs $10,000. What's the difference? Is it the size of the diamond? Is it the weight of the diamond? No, it's the clarity of the diamond. It's the color of the diamond. It's the cut of the diamond. Those are the things that distinguish one diamond from another. Even diamonds have what's considered acceptable and non-acceptable thresholds, and so do windows. So I hope this helps. Some of you window dealers across the country are probably thanking me for this video right now because you get the calls like I get. And, and of course, everybody wants a great product, right? Everybody wants to get what they paid for. But glass is imperfect. And if it meets these standards, you have every right in the world to say, replace it or give me my money back. But if it doesn't meet the standard and it does pass, cut the guy a little slack. He's trying really hard and he does care. And we care. And that's why we're here. If we can help you here in Houston, come see us. If you live somewhere else around the country, let me know. Maybe, maybe we know somebody in your area that does a really good job of selling and installing windows and doors. And uh, if you're in the area, for sure, come by and meet Bradley, meet me. We let's see what we can do to help. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll talk again real soon.